Hey guys, Becca that is editing this a couple of days ago after we've recorded this. Some of the things that I say in this podcast around the woman of nerd culture podcast, it's not correct. We didn't actually get to record it because I'm a parent and parent things happened. So that episode won't be out until next week, but enjoy. Stars bring wrong, obsidian fleet our eternal home with stories untold. Hello, and we are here with your Saturday, slightly earlier than normal edition of Fleetcast, Doctor Who edition, woohoo! And, yeah. and as for you, Shepard Doctor Who, I am joined by the ever lovely Ben. How have you been? Not bad, thank you. How about you? Tired. Oh, so tired. I, 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 I know your pain. I, I did a convention yesterday. Oh, which one? It was just it was just one in Sunderland. Um, it was just okay. it was a little one. Um, and they had some, they had a guy from Star Wars, and something else. But they're not they weren't they weren't actors that I knew really to be to be brutally honest. But they had loads and loads of like scenes and stuff that you could, um, take photos in front of and things like yeah. that. And obviously, I know sort of thing. I was there with with my tiny human and some friends. So it, it was good. It was it was good. It was actually probably the most family friendliest um, con that I've been to because they had tables set up with board games. They had tables set up with just coloring. And they had mm. bouncy castles. So it was. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, and they were letting adults on there as well. Um, I, I was going to say, were you tempted to go? on No, the no, but I did think I was going to be the one that was going to have to rescue the children if 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 they got scared, but. They did fantastic. I'm really proud of the people and the kids that I went with. It was fantastic, but I am I'm very tired. Yeah, I can imagine. But we are nearly at the final countdown for this season of Doctor Who. We are nearly there. We've yeah, got it's... this episode and then we have got the double feature. Finale. The double feature, which is the final. It's been a long road, hasn't it, this time? Getting from there to here. <laughs> My crew on Atlantis are going to be really proud that you've done that. Really proud. <laughs> but yes, it has been a terribly long road getting from there to here. It really has. And I don't know how else to explain it. It's, it's, not, been yeah. a it's not been a tough ride. But it's just it's been It's just long. scheduling. That's yeah. the problem. It's yeah. literally scheduling. Because we, we are two grown-ups who have got... Well, you've got a very, very grown-up job. I've got a grown-up job, but I've also got a child to keep alive. I've just got a grown-up job and a grown up weirdly, job. A weirdly <laughs> active social life. Yes, you have got a very active social life. Um, but I'm slowly trying to actually tone that down because I can't keep up anymore. <laughs> I'm getting too old. Oh, oh bless you, Ben. You finally <laughs> realised that you're it, getting too old. <laughs> in the immortal words of Murtor in Lethal Weapon, I'm getting too old for this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, bless you. Yeah, so you've, 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 hit, you've, hit, you've hit 30s, haven't you? Yeah, I'm 32. Yes, yeah, that's that's when it happens, to be fair. Yeah. It, well, it started happening when I hit about 21. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Slowly crept along. Yes, so we are very <laughs> tired. We are here and we want to talk about this episode, which... We are now referring to as the Bridgerton episode. I mean, that is exactly what it is. They keep referencing that. They do. They literally reference this so many times among it, but they also use songs in the same way as Bridgerton. So they use, yes. they use, oh, I've, 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 got, I've, well, got, I've got notes. I've got notes and everything. Well, yeah, because they use um, Bad Guy by Billie Eilish yep. at the start, and then yep. they use Poker Face later on. Yes, which yes. I particularly the Poker Face um, orchestral cover I absolutely loved. Yes, um, and uh, yeah, so the tracks are in battle mode, um, and yeah. they are actually done by the Vitamin String Quartet, who use music they also use on Bridgerton so they have done a really really good job <laughs> of making this the Bridgerton episode but what I also like about this episode is the fact that some of the um directors mm. um you've got Kate Heron um and she's very very well known for her female-led comedies she was actually one of mm. the directors and executive producers of the first season of Loki okay 
She also directed an episode of Daybreak, which is mm-hmm. another Netflix series. And she's directed four episodes of Sex Education. Love that show. And she's going to be the director in the second season of The Last of Us. So oh, these I've are... still not watched the first season. Oh, you've got to. So she is a very, very good director. And you can mm. actually see that in this episode. I actually feel like this episode was probably one of the best put together ones. So, yeah, I think... Don't get me wrong, my favourite one is still 73 Yards. That is, hands down, my favourite episode of the season. Country Mile. Mm -hmm. But this episode is a very, very close second for me. It's also the one episode I feel they could have put anywhere in the season, be it at the start, be it at the end, anywhere you like. Like, Yes. If they, like I said last last time, if they'd made this the season opener, I would not have complained. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but, also... oh, but obviously it's down to scheduling it, it literally this season yeah. has been a mishmash because of scheduling because obviously yeah, goatee it still... was still filming his previous show yeah but also they filmed it over a year in advance they could have just put it together in a different order yeah but i i i think yeah i i think they were still struggling with trying to do timings and stuff i think i don't think mm. they knew what they were doing when, yeah, it, when, I... they, when they did it i think they were still trying to find their feet again yeah yeah I'll, I'll agree with that um also going back to the trivia fun fact the um duchess the actress who plays her was previously in torchwood yes because she was the one who stabbed him in the back in the pilot episode yes she was also in luther as luther's ex-wife who was now married to paul McGann. yeah there is there is yeah. a lot of there is a lot of good <laughs> actors and actresses that have come into the season of doctor who you know I am not disappointed by the cast that they put together for this. Yeah, um, I'm also not disappointed by this episode's Captain Jack Light. Because... Yes. Okay. So we've got into that. I am going to go into the myths of this series of this episode. Okay, because we've all watched it, so I don't think I feel like I need to say spoilers or anything because we've we've all seen it. It's been out. We're... It's been out what a month and a half, two months now. I think two months now. Yes. So there are some myths around this episode. So, the myths around this episode is they think that this was going to be the Jack Harkness basically being recast episode. But Mm -hmm. they also, there has been rumours, rumours, that this episode was going to be, basically they were going to reveal the Duchess as the Rani. That That was what people actually expected from the trailer. Oh. Yeah. See, I don't remember the trailer. So see, I don't remember the trailer, but I do remember seeing conversations around it because I actually don't I haven't actually really watched any of the trailers for this series. I don't I think wa- I watched the first one, the one where it had the bit where it made a big I watched deal of how... 73 yards, that's the only one I watched. And that was because it was at the end of the episode. Mm. And that was the block of episodes that I saw at first, and then it was 73 yards. Yeah. Yeah. No, the individual episode trailers, I watched the one for the finale, mm-hmm. or rather for um, Legend of Ruby Sunday, because of course there wasn't one for the actual finale. Yes. Because of the big twist, which we will not get into here. Yep. But I also, um, what was it? I'm losing my voice. Oh yeah, the only other trailer I watched was the one that they put out. I believe it was the Comic Con trailer that came out the year before, mm-hmm. where you had the bit where Ruby turns into the bug person. Yes. Um, where they were trying to make it seem like, oh, the big thing here is sort of cause and effect, which it annoyed me that didn't get played into very much because I was when they put that in the trailer and they were even making a big deal of it in all the promotional stuff. Yeah. I was looking forward to seeing them play with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I was, but I think maybe at that point they were planning to play more into that because obviously I'm... that came out. What that came out was a year before. A, well, yeah. That, this that has been going out... on a while. <laughs> yeah, because that came out, I believe, before the Star Beast. Yeah. Like the, the yeah. we literally had the trailer for, well. We didn't get a trailer for the specials. We just got a trailer for the season. Yeah. So, 
been a long road. <laughs> oh yeah. The final countdown. Do, 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 do. But yes, this episode, I as as we've known, you know, it's called Rogue. Hmm. And I didn't realise until I was doing research after the fact that there was actually a difference between the BBC version and the Disney Plus version. Because Is there? yes. Because this episode had a dedication to William Russell, who died in the week of the initial broadcast. So obviously, when this was put out live, it had in memory of, you know. Yeah. Um, but that didn't happen on the Disney Plus version or any of the other versions that are came across the I, I country. I don't in think any that country. was on the iPlayer version. It was only on there for the first week. Okay. And then so they. Sorry, I've re- I rewatched it this morning. Yeah, it was there. It was that. just there on the initial, the initial week of it, um, and obviously the initial broadcast on yeah. um, BBC. So yeah, this, there were some differences between it, but this episode, I just, I love just how this episode starts because it kind of starts with you know, in the midst of the night in Bath, which I love because Bath and Bristol are not used enough in any of the Doctor Who, even though the settings are used, it's never kind of acknowledged in there. Mm. Um, we are in 1813 and we're in the midst of a ball. Um, and two men are walking outside in the gardens. We've got Lord Gappin, which I love the name of. I love the names in the angry with another lord who's called Lord Barton, um, mm. declaring he's tarnished his sister's reputation. And obviously Barton mocks him back and basically challenges him to a duel instead of a sword game. Mm. And <laughs> this this literally reminds me of the first series of Bridgerton. Yeah, like, the thing that yeah, because the the exchange between I can't remember the character's name, which is really bad, because the brother who was in the main character in season two was my favourite character in season one. Um, you're on Bridgerton. about Anthony Bridgerton. Yeah, when he finds out about um his sister and the Duke, he yes. where he goes to the Duke and starts squaring up to yeah. him. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same. They have literally taken yeah. that scene and done it. But and obviously, but what I, I find... Also... Sorry. No, please. But then what I like is the fact that they stop and they start... Rem- they, um, they remark about the fact that it's exciting, good fun, about scandal and affairs. Um, yeah. And then and he... It, this is where the uh, blonde guy goes into just this really great little bit where he's like, oh, you're just rightfully bad, aren't you? And... I was the worst thing is I watched that scene and I was really disappointed when I realized that that actor wasn't going to be in the rest of the episode because he was really good. Yeah, and he's like, "Oh, I want to be you. This is fun." Yeah, and then this but... is where you realize that something because something's not quite right here. Yeah, because picks dude up, electrical stuff happens, and then he's not there. The other guy's dead on the floor and walking away at the same time. Yeah, so we're like, so at this point, all we know is there is shapeshifters this yeah. is this is a good shapeshifter um story i'm not gonna lie yeah i really do love a good shape shapeshifter story well i mean that's what we're doing currently on power yes, that is what we are doing <laughs> on power ranger solar force but we don't get to see it often in television anymore i can't remember the last hmm. time that we've had a good shapeshifting story like this in doctor who the- in you know in i remember program. the last time we had a good story featuring shapeshifters which was Picard, but that didn't use the fact they were shapeshifters particularly. Yeah, you know, it, I remember uh, the, we obviously we got the Zygons, but I don't remember it being. The Zygons didn't do it especially well. Yeah, I, they did in the one with Capaldi. Yes, that was a good one. That was such a good but episode. Day of the Doctor didn't do the shapeshifter bit well. Oh no, I take that back. Then I like them in that. I like oh, the no, fact that they the use... episode is very good. They I used just... the Queen the Queen Elizabeth I was amazing as a shapeshifter. On the horse. Yeah. It was good. But yes. I, I, don't... I mean, the, the best bit that episode provided was the one of the Zygon, Venom Sacks in the Tongue. And then the, hey, what you do in, in the privacy of your regeneration is your business. Yes, yes. <laughs> which, is, which is just so funny. But obviously, getting mm. back to this episode, um, we kind of shift back to the ballroom and the doctor and Ruby are, you know, they're there and they're dancing among the guests. And what I like is the fact that they actually, 
give over a reason why they're able to dance so perfectly. They've got psychic so, psychic earrings. <laughs> well, uh, I took it to be more an explanation of how Ruby is, because, well, the Doctor at this point, I'm assuming, is probably getting closer to 3,002. Yeah, yeah, possibly. So... It just it just cracks me up that we... This series, I feel very much like we are... They are not basically treating us stupid. They are giving us reasons for things, and I really <laughs> like that. I really yeah. do like that. And also, you get the... Chekhov's gun, or rather Chekhov's earrings, yes. of just whatever you do, don't activate battle mode. Yes. You know, and it's, as soon as they say it, you're like battle mode's going to be activated. Is, this is going to be a thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. And obviously, once the song ends, the hostess, the Duchess of Prem- Pembleton, congratulates mm. them and asks Ruby to come and meet the, su- meet the suitors, yeah. rather uh, than remain dancing. Yeah, after doing the same joke that they used to do in the fourth series with the Doctor and Donna with the, oh, so you're already married. It's yes, like, yes. And, and it's like, oh no, he's just my mate. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. It, the thing is, it was a in some ways more heavy-handed, in other ways less heavy-handed version of that same joke. Yeah. I, I liked it. Which you I, know, I I didn't think it was OTT. I didn't think it was out of place. Yeah, it just I think the only reason why it particularly caught me off guard here is because the um, basically none of the other episodes have done it. Yeah. But I think um, it's a very different style of episode compared to what yeah. we see in other ones. But she kind of goes with well, she, go, she gets feedback in her earrings, doesn't she? And the, and the doctor yeah. says, like, oh, don't worry, don't worry. I'll, I'll look into it. And he's like... And here we see for the first time the pink sonic screwdriver. Yes. But I do, I do I, I'm still not sure if that's lighting. No. Um, I, there was a thing on the Doctor Who YouTube channel in one of the shorts. Oh, okay. Where they had the prop, and it is indeed a pink version of the sonic screwdriver. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know if it was just lighting. No, it, it looks just, like it... we now have the technicolored sonic screwdriver. I'm not, I'm not I... overly concerned about that. I don't mind it. I'm just it. I'm taking it as being basically him changing it, changing cases about like people with a fun, like people doing yeah, fun cases. That's 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 exactly that, kind of what I I feel like he's doing. Yeah, that's what I think that's meant to be. As long as it doesn't get to the point where, because the other thing is, of course, from the marketing point of view, is aha merchandising. Well, we're not. We can no longer. We can now not just put out one sonic screwdriver. We can put out a whole range of them. Look, we should not get me onto merchandise for any series, okay? Because I will go into a rant. We uh, do we do not get me started on merchandise for any series that we review, okay? Because I will criticize, I will get in trouble with Disney. I do not have the dollars to get in trouble with Disney, okay? I don't Okay, have the, so I don't no. have I don't have the money. So don't tell you what I nearly bought earlier. What did you nearly buy? Uh, I nearly bought the 14th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver. Not even surprised. It was in Argos for 18 quid. That's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad at all. I'm like, hmm, uh, that's the one that still looks like a Sonic Screwdriver. Yeah, it's not a bad (laughs) choice. But yeah, no, I shouldn't be trusted and allowed to talk about merchandise any longer because I okay. even got I even got into a rant yesterday at the Comic Con with one of the traders because we, we were talking about Star Trek merchandise. I'm going to quiz you on this after we finish recording. Okay. Because I am sensing multiple stories here. Yes. I, <laughs> yes. But yes, guess in, in fact, fact I, I may at one point just get you to just... Just say, can we just do a whole podcast where we just discuss your opinions on this? To be fair, we probably should. We should just get it out of my system. We should probably yeah. just get it, get it all out of my system. Maybe it could be a Christmas episode, you know. It yeah. could be a Christmas episode. We could talk about merchandise, but... Five best and five worst examples. How can we get into examples when, they do, when Paramount do not give us any merchandise? Uh, well, it doesn't just have to be Star Trek, because... Best not, exa- they will not give us the merchandise. Well, I'm going to say for best examples, Lightning Collection, Weapons. 
worst examples, Mopsy, how much money would they have made? I mean, even more worst examples. The number of times where they've not put out the ships from Star Trek. Precisely. Right. Getting off that subject. Yeah. Getting off the subject. Getting back to Doctor Who and the Rogue. So, yes. So, the Doctor tells Ruby that she can go off with the Duchess as long as she doesn't... Um... Doesn't get married and doesn't invent tar early. Yes. And it's 1902 got away from me a bit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I'm... Has, and... I do like I do like that, and obviously the doctor obviously that's is pulling... also another reuse of a joke because back in Girl in the Fireplace yes. there was the well among other things I think I just invented the banana daiquiri a hundred years early. Yes, <laughs> there are so many feedbacks like linkbacks in this episode. I'm gonna have to go through them at the end because I think there are just so many that we need to talk about. I Love mean, there's it. one that we naturally come to in the course of the episode, oh, which is yes. the best one. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm hoping we're talking about the same one. But yes, obviously, he, the Doctor gets out his sonic screwdriver and scans for alien technology, leading him to notice a well-dressed, handsome man bruising atop a balcony, which yeah. is 100% Captain Jack Harkness, Mark yeah. II. Point, 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 what are we calling him? Point 2.0. 2. 2. 2. 2. And obviously... He's observing rather than getting involved. Yeah, but I... So, first of all, I really like the actor. Yes. Like, I haven't seen him in anything else, so I'll put that out there. But in this, he is very, very good. Yes. I'm trying to... Let's, um, have, we might as well have a look. What, what else is I know he he's been in a few other bits. Let's but it's just... have a look. We might as well get into that now. So, is Jonathan Groff... Yeah, he, right. he has several awards, actually. He's got a Tony Award, a Grammy Award, as okay. well as a nomination for a Primetime Emmy Award. Um, so he began his career, actually, on Broadway in My Life. Um, this is probably where we recognise him. He was King George III in Hamilton, like the, the original production. Um, he's, seen... he's been oh. in Little Shop of Horrors. I have seen him in something else. He, he was, was in, in Glee. He was in the Crap Matrix film. Um, he was the new Agent Smith. It might be, yeah. Um, he no, was, no I've, I've got his Wikipedia page up. He's in Mindhunters. Uh, what else has he been in? Oh, oh my God, he's 39. Yeah. Wow, I thought he was like early 30. He, he voices Sven and Kristoff in Frozen. Okay. Uh... Stunned? Uh, wow they have, they've got some they've got some good you know I, there was me going on about good actors um he's really good yeah um he's been in quite a lot of things like i'm, I'm a bit mm. stunned the fact that he, he's um he's Chavin and Kristoff. he's worst agent smith <laughs> i'm sorry he, no one's got to compare to hugo weaving well, yeah, no, it, it's it's hard to, but like he's he's had a really good career. Like, yeah. I'm I'm oh. really impressed with that. And he is a good actor. Yes. Um. But yes, this is the first time that we meet him in the Doctor Who universe, and I, I I've got to admit, when we first met him, I instantly thought it was going to be Jack. I did really really think it was Jack. Um. Mm. But at this point, that's all we know about him because then it kind of shifts back to Rose mingling with the Duchess when, obviously, the Lord Barton copy returns and begins... H who's mingling with the Duchess? Lo Lord Barton. No, no, no. Who's mingling? Oh, sorry. Lord <laughs> Barton's copy. No. You said Rose. Oh, look, do I say again? <laughs> no. You don't make the mistake that the doctor made during the song in Church on well, Ruby Road and mix the two blondes up. It's, it's really hard because and Rose sound really, really, really similar, and they and, look and similar. And it, it's they're they're both pretty young blonde girls. Yeah, and I I get a bit confused with the blondes. Um, but yes, mm. he, they are there with Ruby Ruby Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they are not Rose Tyler. No, not Rose Tyler, <laughs> Rupert Sunday. And obviously Lord Barton's copy is flirting with her. 
and then while she, uh, I, I I love that bit because she's like, oh, here's a tall glass of handsome coming, and it's like, oh, you're not a tall glass of anything. Oh, you're a half pint of shandy. Yeah, yeah, she's <laughs> she's very very kind of turned off by him and like irritated by him. Because the line he pulls is trash, to be fair. Yes, but what I like is she dis- dismisses him as Lord Milton, and it literally <laughs> just. I can remember laughing, and I'd be like, the, the, the worst bit is, whenever I was thinking, of, like, thinking of this episode, that was what I remembered his name as. Yeah. He was Lord Stilton. Yeah, 100%, like, Lord Stilton, it's, but it's, it's just so funny. Mm. Um, but obviously she shocks him, and he doesn't, he doesn't notice, he doesn't, like, realise it. But this is when mm. <sighs> she notices the portrait of an old woman. And who is it yet again? Susan Twist. Susan Twist is back as the the Lord's um mother. Deceased mother. Yes. And obviously she she recognizes it instantly as the villain guard's ambulance hologram. And yeah. then she recognizes it as Penny Pepper Bean and others. That, yes. Well Penny Penny Pepper Bean. Yeah. And obviously she notices that it's same as several other people they've encountered off screen. Mm with the doctor on the travels and obviously yeah. the duchess then approaches and explains the woman was the mother of the duke whose mansion they're in yeah and then so she finds her disturbing and i don't know about you but when i was watching this episode the eyes of the portrait seem to fo- seem to follow she comments on it yeah you know you kind of get that feel- feeling of oh it's thing creepy is- so, this is actually something that a lot of people do comment on. When you see p- portraits of people, you do always feel like the eyes are following you around yes. the room. And yes. it is a well-documented phenomena. Yeah. Like, it, it's... Ironically, I think it's because we all watch a bit too much Scooby-Doo as kids. We're not going to judge <clears> you because I watched Scooby-Doo this weekend. Oh, are you kidding? I, I, I absolutely, particularly the live action movies with Freddie Prince Jr. and Sarah oh, Michelle Gellar. I, I like the cartoons. I like the cartoon, but I love that live action, particularly the first one where they had Rowan Atkinson in it. Good one. But yes, it's, it, <laughs> it is a well known phenomenon. But I do like the fact that it is just so creepy in that moment to yeah. the point that I thought, oh, this is this where gonna this is going to be a thing. This is where we're going to find out who Susan Twist is. You know, we mm. might find a little bit more. And then that was it. We didn't really think anything else. Well, go right. So, going into it, mm-hmm. and obviously we do know now this was not the case. I had a brief period where I wondered because everyone keeps mentioning the Rani, and I saw one thing brought up online the other day, which made a very good point, which is Russell T. Davis likes to bring back classic villains he in does. order. He really does. Now, here's the thing, because everyone's saying, oh, that's why it's going to be Rani. I'm like, if he's doing it in order, Omega comes first. Mm-hmm. But Omega is also a very, to be fair, he's got the same number of appearances as Rani, but he is a villain who I think is much harder to do well. Mm-hmm. Because of what he is. Yes. Um... But I legitimately thought that Susan Twist was going to turn out to be the Rani at one point. We just didn't know. We just, and obviously in this mm. episode, we still don't know. But. Yeah. yeah. It just, you know. And then obviously they kind of discuss a little bit more about the mum and obviously discussing how um, creepy the image is. And mm. then the pair notice that Barton is trying to flirt with someone else um mm. lady lady beckett i believe it is yeah um and the pair soon leave the room together and obviously ruby is a nosy parker and she follows them <laughs> outside while the duchess yeah. goes off to pursue someone a... who's wearing the same dress that she wore last year yes which that, is that's just what that's about. which is just hilarious but we then get to the moment that we've kind of been waiting for is where the doctor well, no, first of all, we get the bit with the Duchess outside, obviously in front of a woman, but then you have her with the um, housekeeper who starts complaining about oh, yeah, how she yeah. made a mistake being the help. 
and then basically does the same thing that happened to Lord Stilton earlier. Yes, yes. So, so the sh- Duchess gets barbecued. <laughs> yes. And, and was... then, yeah. Then we kind of... We get, get the Doctor and Rogue. And I love this because that sort of... The Doctor is actively trying to one-up Rogue. Yes, and I kind of like the scene because obviously it's on the balcony, you know, they're both staring across the balcony, the, you know, the scene below with the dancing and stuff. And well, I no, just... that was earlier. Now Is they're it? walking through. Yeah, because at this point they're now walking through the thing. Okay. And this is where, um, as I say, the Doctor is act Because earlier on when they were in at the balcony again, the Doctor was actively trying to one-up him. But it wasn't quite... He wasn't being quite so... I don't want to use the word aggressive in mm-hmm. it, but at that point, he was just doing his typical slightly showboaty bit. Yeah. And sort of the I know better than you bit. Well, yeah, because he asks him, um, obviously, when he reaches him on the balcony, he says, mm. oh, are we expecting trouble to come? Um, mm. Hence why he's not, you know, getting involved in the celebrations. And the kind of the man, Rogue, obviously says to him, oh, follow me outside. And then obviously. Fast mover. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then that's kind of where it kind of gets it gets a little bit more complicated. Because both of them think that the other one is the one who's done it. Yes, obviously. And then back at the mansion, Ruby reaches the library, hiding behind a bookshelf where she's listening to Barton and Emily argue. Yeah. And obviously Barton reveals that he can't marry Emily despite her feelings and it kind of it it kind of it kind of gets really quite com- complicated, and then Ruby... now it really does turn into Bridgerton. Yes, it really does <laughs> turn into Bridgerton. Like if we if we were in in any doubt before now, this is where we were like, okay, we are just in a Bridgerton episode. And obviously, <laughs> Ruby, this is this is a part why I kind of laughed again because Ruby kind of knocks over a book, causing yeah. them both to notice her. Um, and obviously Barton excuses himself and leaves, and Emily's crying, saying her reputation is ruined. Um, Ruby called them having an, having an affair uh, out, outside of no, words. She called them having a conversation. Yeah, and that, that, but that's what obviously uh, yeah, I Emily, know. It's, Emily, it's cause of the time. Emily says. And obviously Ruby convinces her that, oh, they should just go and dance, take their minds off the situation. Mm. But I find that we we kind of only get like five minutes in each area before it kind of flicks other one yeah although what i do so yeah first of all they definitely do keep flicking the problem is this because the writers very much wanted to keep very much wanted to put the doctor and row together alone Mm -hmm. past the episode it feels like the stuff with ruby is almost tacked in because mm-hmm. they were like, oh god, we need to do something with her. Yeah, it does It does feel um, ever so slightly like that, especially ironic- at this point. Yeah, ironically, at the back end of the episode, it starts to feel like now the stuff with the Doctor and Rogue is being tacked in for the sake of exposition. Yes. Um, and it goes from the Doctor is the A-plot to Ruby's the A-plot, back to the Doctor's the A-plot. Yeah, and that was that's I, my only criticism, to be fair, of this episode, is the yeah, staff. Yeah, I... Yeah, because I feel like the two plots are kind of fighting each other at points because they both want to be centre of attention. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also it does lead to the Doctor making some very un- undoctory decisions later on. Yeah, just just, just a couple. It's, yeah. <laughs> like, to be honest, those are my biggest criticism because the Doctor doesn't act like the Doctor. Yeah, he, d- he doesn't really, especially I find like in the next sort of 10 minutes of this episode, obviously when they're back out in the garden, yeah. um, you know, the doctor's remarking about the constellations in the sky and how the Regency area is when they start being given names. However, yeah, and then he's, he mentions how the guy was good with stars, bad with names. And yeah. he's like, he, he, called, he called one Norma after his mother. Yeah, and obviously that, but obviously then they stop when they notice the Duchess's shoes and her corpse. Yes, um, but I love the doctor's remark. You don't leave. You don't leave any situation with only one shoe. Someone would notice. 
<laughs> not, not even a case of because it would be uncomfortable. Yeah. And it's a get this one I, I took as another deep cut reference because I refer you back to Smith and Jones, yeah. where he gets rid of the radiation into one shoe. Yeah. And then Martha says, You're that's this ridiculous. And then Doc's like, You're right, I look silly with only one shoe. Yeah. <laughs> it takes but the other one. Mean, there are just so many callbacks in this episode. <laughs> to previous seasons the previous moments in the series mm. and it's it's a fascinating episode from that point of view yeah. um but i do i do kind of i do like this part obviously they assess that she's died from like an alien and then but he then notices that rogue is unsurprised and obviously they start exchanging more trying to one-up each other confirming that obviously they're both but, not from earth or they're not both from the time period also what they start doing is they start make they start making somewhat veiled accusational statements yeah. to the other one yeah and it's like neither one of them is going as far as to actually go straight to oh you did it until yeah. you get to that punchline where they both go you did it. Yeah. No, you. No, yeah. no, you. <laughs> and obviously then Rogue draws his gun or to the mm. doctor at gunpoint, which I was like, okay, this is this has got to be done. This is literally Captain Jack 2.0. This is literally, obviously, marches yeah. him to the outskirts of the garden and then... And he says about how he parked his ship just behind that shed. Yeah. Which, of course, is the TARDIS. And then the ship decloaks. Which, am I the only one who got massive Klingon Bird of Prey vibes from this ship? I got Star Trek vibes, but I, I didn't narrow it, narrow it down to which, which kind of ship. So, it was because of how the wings are folded up like the Klingon Bird of Prey does in Star Trek Four when it lands. Okay. And purely because of that, like literally as soon as I saw this thing, decloak with the wings up like that, I'm like, it's Klingon Bird of Prey. And I was like, no, it's not. The like the neck's not there. The, but ironically, the design is somewhat it does look like a bird, but the overall silhouette is actually somewhat reminiscent of the Discovery Klingon bird of prey. Yes. <laughs> but then obviously he re rogue um reveals that he believes the doctor is a shoulder shoulder, shoulder which is basically a shapeshifter. And he's, they are killing guests at the party to become them. And mm. Rogue reveals that he's basically paid to get rid of them. So he's a bounty hunter. Yes. Um, and what I love is when they get into Rogue's ship, Rogue makes the comment about how there's been so much more paperwork since they got that new boss. Which, of course, we've had mention of a new boss before. Yes. Back in the Star Beast. Yes. And even now, so I, mild spoilers incoming, we still haven't had this new boss answered. Oh, we still haven't. Um, as, of, I, as of the 2nd of September 2024, we have not had no answers to this. I, I have theories, but no concrete answers. That's a whole different episode. That's a whole... Yeah, we, we need to do that. That one. is a whole different episode. But yes, so this this part in the ship had me absolutely creased. Yeah, I was in stitches the whole because time. Because obviously, Rogue contains the Doctor in a triform, basically uh, intending to incinerate him. Yeah, because the first thing he says is, conf um, scanners confirm, shapeshifter, because of course the Doctor is. And then he's just like, and then he's just, the Doctor says, oh, well, I've I've got my own weapon he's like no if you had any weapons my ship would have told me immediately instead it's telling me screwdriver well that's handy i've got some shelves i need putting up over yes there. yes and that would again i refer you back to funny enough jack's first appearance where um he says his comment to the doctor is well i've got a banana and in a pinch you can put up some shelves yes <laughs> but i really really like how doctor solves the situation without using sonic screwdriver because he throws but, uh, but, but no he throws his psychic paper psychic paper and but before that you get the single best bit 
Well, actually, no, second best bit, because we're about to go to is the best bit. Where he's, where first of all, he's doing the Sonic to look around. And did you get your name from Dungeons and Dragons? Yes. Roll, got, roll, roll for, for initiative. Yeah. And I was just like, yes. Doctor, please do indeed get it. And so does Rogue, apparently. <laughs> Yes, but um, we then, then get the best bit, and I think this is a little bit of payoff. I, I mean, we we've still got the bit where the doctor won't let him turn off his music. Yes, but <laughs> we've got we've like got we've got a moment before then where. Um... But, it's af- but it's after. Is it? Because the bit, if you're thinking the same bit as me, the bit where he throws the paper. Yes, that's the end of the scene. Oh, okay, okay. So let's talk about the bit. The, the bit with the music then. Go on. You yeah, go off and talk about it. It is literally just the fact that the Doctor comments, oh, I, oh it says you're wired for sound. <clears throat> it starts play- and it starts playing Can't Get You Out of My Head Can't by get Kylie you Minogue. Out of my head. Yeah. And the Doctor is literally just sort of dancing, doing a little jig along to it. You can tell that Nugati had the best time in this scene because it was yeah. just, he was proper groove into the song. Yeah. Yeah, he's just literally doing the hip roll, and you got the bit where Rogue says, "Stop it!" and Doc's like, "I'm not doing anything. I'm just standing still." Yeah, of course he can't move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a very good scene, and it kind of it kind of relieves a little bit of the tension that has been building in this one because we're like, "Shit, the Doctor is is stuck. He's he's not going to get out of this. He doesn't have anything to help him." And it it's kind of also... what I love about it as well is it's here. This is one of the first times I think where this particular incarnation of the Doctor feels like he is behaving like the Doctor. Yeah. Because he, in previous episodes, he's sort of almost gone there, but not quite. I wonder if this is like the first proper episode he's filmed. Well, I actually wondered if, the, if, because, but if the same thing that, no because they knew he was cast from the word go because obviously with matt smith's earlier ones you can actually tell some of them feel like they weren't written with that specific doctor in mind yeah i don't i don't think it's the the writing i Mm. i think it's more him getting into the role yeah because it's got to be very hard because what they had were eight episodes this year Mm. well he he only got he only got really involved for six of them yeah because He's in like two scenes in each of the other. Two. Yeah, so he didn't really have much time to kind of yeah get into this character. Mm. Um, and I think obviously in previous episodes that shows, but in this one I do feel very much like he is finally finding his his groove mm. and getting involved. Yeah, and also he's doing what the Doctor does, which is going okay. Yes, he's on the back foot, but rather than just starting to attack his adversary what to do he starts making them angry yes because he knows that if he makes them angry they will make mistakes yes and obviously he does because he throws the psychic paper and yeah because rogue's about to incinerate him and he throws the psychic paper because it's already showing the holographic image of him yes and then it reveals all his other yeah because the bit that so I have a tiny nitpick with this. Okay. The fact that there was no order to them, because it got literally the images that come up, you get 10, then 13, then one. Okay, so that really doesn't bother me. Really, really, really doesn't bother me. That was me me getting a little bit OCD. Yeah, that is definitely, that's definitely you with your OCD, but. Particularly because previous episodes have always done them sequentially when they go through them but they didn't for this episode because obviously we have shocker doctor yes we have richard e grant revealed as actual a canon doctor and i just i want this love this moment that we 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 get with this 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 doctor being you know what i kind of want though what's that what i kind of want is Yes, have that. But actually, there's no reason why this has to be pulling from any kind of memory thing the Doctor's got. Yeah. 
that there's no reason why that it can't be when it comes to where Enchuti's doctor regenerates that is what we get yeah there is like and it wouldn't surprise me because russell t davis has done things like this before yeah and also let's face it richard e grant would be a good doctor yes he he like, would he, he be. is a good actor yes um, um, but obviously, I put the images up on the screen because I think it's important for people to see it because I actually missed this the first time I watched it. Yeah, so did I. I thought it was a really bad render of Eccleston. Yeah, yeah, that was me. That was me. And I thought, oh, you um, know, they're, they're, I, I they're, doing, they're doing. I was like, oh, they're doing Eccleston dodging because obviously he's being he's being a bit funny with um they, Doctor well, yeah, Who this, again. This was literally right after he'd been on that convention where he'd literally said for him to come back. Sack Julie Gardner, yeah. sack Russell T Davis, sack Phil Collinson. <laughs> yeah, this is this is obviously, and obviously Rogue lets lets him go. That obviously he reveals. Then Rogue's response is just, "Wow." <laughs> yes, so it's revealed that obviously the Doctor is a Time Lord. He's from Gallifrey. He's not a soldier. Um, and then it kind of gets back to the ballroom where the Duchess copy meets the Barton copy and mm. they kind of observe the dancers and they kind of discuss their plans. Yeah, this is, again, where the plot starts to be at odds with itself a little bit. Yes, it kind of, yeah, it does, it does, it kind of suffers from this back and forth that they're trying to do. Um, yeah. But what I kind of, kind of really like is the fact that they, co they comment that they thought that royalty would show up. And I'm like, oh my god, if Queen Charlotte showed up, that would have been amazing. Because obviously the children want to, they want to cosplay um, yeah. royalty. I absolutely yeah. love the characters and the fact that they are cosplaying creatures, and that is their, that is their biggest love in life. I do love I it. Honest, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I honestly think this should have been the episode that they screened at Comic Con. Just because it's the cosplay of it. Yeah, yeah. They would have got so many laughs out of the audience for that exact point. Yeah. Obviously, the, but the Duchess remarks that, obviously, because she can't have royalty, she's going to settle for Ruby. Um, mm. Because the her personality is interesting to her. Um, which, which is weird, because, like, from what we've seen, they don't take on any kind of personality points from the person yeah i think she so, just i think she would just enjoy playing ruby i yeah, think that's that, what it is yeah it's just the way that it's sort of phrased and put out mm -hmm. is very bizarre yeah i i didn't see it as bizarre i just thought oh she would enjoy trying to pretend to be ruby but obviously mm. ruby and emily leave the ball room and they find another corpse, don't they? And Ruby's like, okay, well, we need to find, we need to find the Doctor. Mm. And then... We get the Doctor and Rogue in the TARDIS. Yes. Which, I first of all, I love the Doctor's line when, obviously, the TARDIS makes sort of the groaning noise, which she's been doing that a lot since, well... um. While Blue Yonder was when that started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Doctor's comment is, oh, it's indigestion. She doesn't like bounty hunters. Something about the moral void. <laughs> I'd forgotten that. I'd forgotten I that. I love that lie. I'd forgotten that, yes. But I do like the fact that it is into that. Mm. And obviously... Uh, come on. Yeah, well, when you've watched the rest of the series, you know exactly why it is. Yeah, yeah. But it's sort of what I love is it's they lit the fact that they did start setting up back in the second special. Yeah, they really did. You know, this this was a very very well played plot up there mm. with possibly Bad Wolf. Oh, Ben's trying to hold a trying to hold a girl oh, then. No. <laughs> I am trying to hold you on in, yeah. <laughs> oh, bless you. That, that's not a reflection on you. That's a, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> we're grown ups. We're tired. Yeah. Um, uh, I would. So. I wouldn't necessarily put it up there with Bad Wolf. I would, however, put it up there 
with the there's something on your back one in series mm-hmm. four with Donna. Okay, I think that's that's a conversation for the next episode because I think we are we're, we need to yeah we're gonna have to yeah, line we, them we up. We need to have the context. Yeah, we need to have the context. <laughs> but yes, so jumping back to this episode, um, and obviously them being in the TARDIS, they're obviously trying to adapt the console to make a triform so that it will send the Toldra to Which a random triform, yeah, yeah yeah it would like it would make them to a random but isolated dimension, dimension. in the universe rather than killing them um and obviously, Which... i love i love that this leads back to david tennant's um doctor where we had the is it the people of the blood the family of blood family of blood yeah yeah also what i love is where later on the when the doctor finally gets pushed too far um which there is something else in this episode which i'm going to discuss with you when we get to that point or rather when we get to the end but he actually he goes from doing this for a good reason to suddenly he has the worst possible reason for yeah. why he wants that yes <laughs> yes um but the, the, you know this is another this is this is just another jump back to um another another plot point yeah. and you can literally just see all the different versions of the doctor mm. playing out in this in this scene but what i love mm. is the fact that how they kind of decide to draw out shapeshifters because they are going to create scandal i love this scene this scene is just so good you know they suggest that they're gonna dance and that's what they do what i love as well is the fact that rogue says well how is that gonna cause scandal and doc's like oh you really don't know anything about this time period do you yes (laughs) and i absolutely love this episode for it um Mm. i do think this is one of the better episodes that we we've seen that highlights you know lgp situations and how Um, that time 95 percent of the episode as well it does it very well yes uh the one point where it doesn't is the point that we're going to be coming to in the next scene yes obviously they Um, return to the ball they return to the ballroom meeting with ruby and emily um Both them, but what I kind of like is they both realise that they're caught up in the shapeshifters issues. Game. Yeah, in the game. Um, and the Doctor deduces from Ruby's mark about how very Bridgerton the whole situation is. Yeah. Um, and how obviously they're taking the forms of cosplay inspired by the show's yeah. drama and scandal. Um, and obviously they go off to to dance. And it's. You know, we've got the scene where the the ballroom is dan- is shocked by two mm. men dancing together, um, and then eventually and... the doctor breaks up the dance by starting an ar- argument with Rogue. I kind of li- I do like this scene. I'm not gonna lie. I, no, no, this part was good. Yes. Cause and the way, first of all, they managed to play it both heightened and understated at the same time. Yeah. Which is very impressive. Yes. Um, like at no point does it go into full like it's melodramatic because it's supposed to be. Yes. But it doesn't become farcical for it. Yes. And that's one of the things that I love about this particular scene. Like just the performances they both put in were it's it's such a good performance and it, like you said it's this scene kind of very is heightened but it's it's not quite as ott mm. as previous scenes that we've seen of this this kind yeah. of this kind of nature but obviously <laughs> i love how i love how some people have described it so they've described it as two lovers a scandalous affair ended in a marriage proposal from rogue that the doctor rejects and then then both running from the room mm. and the whole room is kind of gripped by like oh, oh my god oh my god oh my god but then we finally get the 
aviation, the avian yeah. aliens, which I'm going to pop a p picture up on the scene. It's not quite the picture of that scene, but I think people need to see just how cool these aliens are. Oh, oh they, the design were brilliant. It is actually this scene. I've forgotten. It's a different what, image that I had earlier. It's, yes, it's this where you see all four of them. Which the problem is, this also does then lead into the bit where the doctor tells Ruby to stay in with Bennett mm -hmm. while him and Rogue go off, which is a thinly veiled excuse for the doctor to try and get lucky. Yes. And this is the part of the episode that I hate with a passion because mm -hmm. this is where his behavior just stops being the doctor. Yeah. Because he knows full well you have shape-shifting, murderous aliens there. Oh, but it's fine. I'll leave her here because yeah. I want to try and get laid. Yeah, and obviously he That's... leaves He leaves Ruby with Emily. And then this is when we realize that it isn't just yeah. four of them. It's five. It's five of them. Because Also, I'm very, this is where I'm really impressed with the makeup. Um, because they managed to take, because the girl who played Bennett was sort of, again, quite an attractive young lady. Yeah. They managed to make her look god-awful with that makeup. Yes. <laughs> and obviously, she's decided that she wants to cosplay Ruby, Ruby, and then there is a flash. And you just hear the scream. Yes. Because a horse goes into the corridor. Yes. And once again, that is the point where it just becomes like it's chaos. For God's sake, for God's sake, Doctor, what are you doing? Yes, because then obviously the Duchess announces that there's going to be a wedding. Yes, because now the Doctor, um, after having just when they went outside, a cheeky little snog with Rogue, because mm -hmm. you know why not? Yeah. Um. Then has the bit where Ruby comes in with the shoulder yes and it is basically said that they have killed her but the doctor the is absolutely devastated the thing is what people forget is the doctor hasn't actually had a lot of his companions get killed no he hasn't um it because everyone is under the misconception it largely comes from the moffat era where that happened a lot more than any other era yes um but if we're going, I'm excluding Big Finish stuff here because I've not listened to it or I don't know all of them. I know, yeah. there's, a, I know there's a couple in the Paul McGann stuff where they get killed as well. Yeah, but that's the type of war. That is a slightly different vibe yeah, to... but there were... In terms of sort of main series companions, there was Adric. Yeah. There was... Um, I don't even count Amy and Rory. No, they did, how... but they didn't die. They, they were literally transported back in time. Yeah. So they lived their I... lives. I count Clara and I count count Bill. Yes. Those two. Like, but it, but it's different. Ways. But it's different. The, but even then, they're different because they the, do get lives. Yeah. yeah. So the, in theory, it's it's a very very big misconception that the Doctor's companions die. Yeah, it's very very rare that that ha the the Doctor dies a lot. Yes. Like to to be quite honest, his life insurance policy would cost a small fortune. Yeah, you know, there's definitely. Like, imagine the premiums. Yeah, I try, I try, <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> but obviously, he kind of embittered. This is the part where the doctor kind of twists, doesn't it? He kind of shifts and he changes because obviously I'd, he's very I bitter now. That is also one of the parts where, again, I can actually see previous doctors in it. Because, as I mentioned back in Wild Blue Yonder, the Doctor is Machiavellian. Mm -hmm. Like he, because the whole thing in Series Eight with Capaldi, where there was the whole "Am I a good man?" as the yes. through line, and of course the answer is no. The, the The Doctor tries to make people think he's a good man, but no, he he is. Like as I say, he is Machiavellian. He is at times bordering on sadistic. Yeah. Um, and, and this very much plays out in this moment because obviously he asks Rogue how long... How long does a child live? And obviously it's 600... 600 six, years. Yeah. And then the doctor's response is, 
good that's a long time to suffer yeah because he has now gone from i want to do this because i don't want to kill them to i want to do this because i want them to be tortured and i you know i want revenge obviously he goes back and interrupts the wedding um Which, again i love how he plays this because you get that bit where he brings up he holds up the thing and it's because he first of all comes with the i object i'm sorry if we got to that bit yet yeah <laughs> and it plays back in today of the it played there wasn't even day of the doctor it was one of the other ones of day where it's i'm rubbish at weddings especially my own yeah yeah <laughs> yes but obviously this is the moment after he's activated the triforce that we reveal that ruby is actually herself she activated battle mode yep deus ex earrings no sorry chekhov's earrings beg chekhov's pardon. ears yes um she kind of activated herself and then we get the poker face cover. Yes. <laughs> which I loved. Yes. This 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 part is is good. Obviously, we've then got Emily's copy appearing. The fact that her nose is broken from Ruby hitting her. Um yeah. and then obviously You see what she did. Yes, it's so funny. Obviously, Emily then charges at the doctor only for Rogue to interview intervene and obviously force her into the Triform trap. While forcing Ruby out. Yes. So Ruby is saved. Rose this is, is the trapped. Other bit. You had the moment where the doctor gets up. The doctor gets asked, can he do it? Yeah. Can he kill Ruby to basically save the world? Yes. And his answer is no. This is a part that I do take issue with because this is the guy who was willing to kill two species. Like, fair enough, it was on a particularly bad day. Yeah. But... He he was still willing to, and not only was he willing to do it once, he was willing to do that three times because there were three of him there. Yeah. Um. So, and two of them knew the aftermath of it as well. Yes. So the fact that then he can't kill this one girl who he's known for a proportionally short period of time, but we're meant to believe this same guy who could also wipe out his own species yeah and i, d I do kind of find how this e this episode ends is quite sad obviously it reminds me of girl in the fireplace at the end yeah it, it, it has that same bittersweet ending yeah and obviously rogue moves towards the doctor you know he, he tries to comfort him kisses him and obviously by doing so he takes the remote you know yeah and he he does it, you know, he makes himself and the tri and the shapeshifters disappear off to an unknown dimension. Mm. Um, and he but what I do like, I think is sweet, is he tells the doctor to find him. And mm. I'm like, oh. Yeah, because that's actually his last line before yeah. he falls. I'm, I was and... like, that's really sad. Mm. And then obviously that we've got the next scene with them outside, you know, the doctor's using his sonic scrooge, screwdriver to move rogue ship to the to the moon and obviously bless her ruby is just so sweet she like she's she's saying to him oh well we're we're, we're trying to find him you know and obviously but the doctor kind of snaps at her saying mm. you know stating you know this endless numbers of our dimensions finding rogue is not possible especially as he never revealed his real name um but then like the doctor kind of shifts and he's like oh, okay right let's go and then obviously we realise that it's all it's all it's all fake, you know. It's his his new get up and go attitude is all fake. But it's mm. just really sad. I don't I don't like how this episode yeah. ends. It's very much like you said. It's very much like the girl in the fireplace. Mm. And I don't I don't like how that episode ends. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. You I don't. Basically I, hit the nail on the head. I, I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. Um. I think this. It's sort of like, first of all, I, do, I, as I say, I don't like the Doctor's behaviour for about half the episode. Yeah. Because it feels, it does feel like his priorities are all wrong. Yeah. And ironically, in this scene, it feels like they're all wrong in the opposite direction. Yeah, he kind of very, very much shifts. Um, but. Uh, the thing that I am annoyed about is... 
I would have liked to have seen that shift carry through mm-hmm. and have been present in his behaviour in the next couple of episodes, but it's very much not. How I come to peace with that is mm. I believe that they have way more adventures than they let on. They come in there, between. Are, yeah, yeah, there are tons of adventures in between. Yeah. This is why we have got tons more um, Susan Twists. Um, there are tons more. But I don't necessarily think this episode has any big bad points. The only issue I have with this episode is the pacing, <clears throat> excuse me, and the fact it goes back and forth. There is no kind of consistency with the storytelling. I know why they've done it, yeah. because they want to yeah. give them both stories, but I didn't like that. So for that reason, it gets a four rogues from me. See. For me, uh, so I agree with you, the pacing was awful. Mm -hmm. Um, As I said earlier, it felt like the two plots were at war with each other. It felt like they couldn't decide which one should be the A plot. Yeah. And it suffers for it. Yeah. Um, I also, as I say, I don't like the Doctor's behaviour in the episode. Mm -hmm. He does Ironically, this episode has the points where he feels the most like the Doctor in this season. And the least like the doctor. Yeah. And yeah. he does he does both. Yeah. Um, and ironically, he does both in the space <clears> of about ten minutes as well. Well, in some in some <laughs> moments, it's it's minutes. But what is your score for this episode? Four. Is this the it's highest? A... Is this the highest rated episode for this so far? Uh, hang on, I actually got the spreadsheet up earlier. Uh, no, the highest rate was seven three yards, which got ten out of ten. Oh, okay, I'd forgotten that. Uh, that was one of only two episodes so far. We're getting a 10 out of 10. The other one was The Giggle. Yes, yes. I remember uh, now. We, we're getting quite a few nines. Yeah. <laughs> so this has got eight, 8 out of 10, which is it's a solid episode. It yeah. is a solid episode. You know, it's, it was a good episode. Could they, yeah, have, I mean, could they have changed a few things? Yes. Yeah, are we gonna, Are we going to beat them up over it? Nah. Nah, it, it's not worth it. Like, nah. <laughs> But yes, so what? So what I was gonna say earlier, I said I'll pick up on later on, yeah. is this episode very much illustrates the role of the companion in Doctor Who. Yes, which the actual role of the companion, at least from my point of view when I watch it, is the companion is there to basically reel the Doctor in. Yeah, like yeah, obviously there is the they are there to be the audience's sort of viewpoint, so that. There's a reason for Doctor to be explaining things. But the companion also serves to basically restrain the Doctor. Yeah. And ironically, I think Ruby does that a little bit too well. Yeah. She... But I don't, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think she's the... still finding her place in, the, in that, I yeah, think. Yeah, I, th- I think because she is essentially... There are two ends to this scale. The other end is Clara, who yeah. she didn't just not restrain him. She encouraged all of, particularly with Capaldi, she encouraged all of his worst impulses. Yeah. Uh, Ruby is just, which is weird because with Smith, she again restrained him far too much. Yeah, it's Clara. <laughs> Clara is was a... just inconsistently written. <laughs> yeah, I think that's very much what, where where Clara is. But what's the other scale of this, then? Uh, so Ruby is the other end of that scale, where they restrain the Doctor a little bit too well. Okay. And to the point where it is to the detriment of basically how effective the Doctor is. Okay. And that's particularly demonstrated in that final scene where Rogue has to tackle Ruby off of the thing. Because, again... Most other doctors with most other companions, they wouldn't like it, mm-hmm. but they would eventually accept the greater good point of view. Mm, I I know I I depending don't... on which doctor and which companion we talk about. Um, there is another ten and companion. Rose. Yeah, I was gonna say 
There, there is another blonde who would probably have that, but that was for a whole different reason. Amy, Amy, and uh, Matt Smith's doctor. Not so much, actually, because well, there's an episode where he literally kills her. I know, because obviously you've got the you've got the angel one when they're in the spaceship, and you know. Yeah, but in um, the girl who waited, the doctor literally kills Amy. Yeah, but that's a different version. That's an older version. (laughs) No, it doesn't, man. (laughs) <laughs> Don't be starting that timey wimey stuff. <laughs> but yes, so this episode is going out slightly earlier because I've got a recording of the women of nerd culture. Um, it should be coming out at eight pm this evening. But Ben, okay. what's who's your favourite kick-ass woman in media? Ooh, this is a tough one. This is a really tough one. I'm trying to avoid the cliches because the first one that I come to is Princess Leia. Okay, that is not the one that not people have been coming to. It's not. Uh, I'm guessing it's, Ripley. Yes, up. Ripley. Ripley is like number one, but this is going to be the episode around our personal ones, so yeah. it, no, this should be interesting. For me, Princess Leia, uh-huh. Lara Croft. Okay. And oh, there is a third. To be fair, Wonder Woman. That is really unique choices. I I like your selection. Mm. Yeah, that's, what about that's yours. Are you I can't tell you. I yours? can't tell you because that's going to be in the episode that you'll have to watch later on. I I mean, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Ben's trying to work out. Th- this is when we're filming, Ben. This is the next episode we're filming on Saturday night. I know. But we're not going to be able to watch it because we'll be filming. Yeah, I, I was. That's what I was trying to work out. I'm like, but aren't we recording? No, then? I'm, to... I'm, I'm recording three episodes. No, four <laughs> episodes this week. Oh Jesus! I am recording two Doctor Who episodes with you. I am recording one episode with my two two girls, um, Sammy and Sarah, for Women of Nerd Culture, and then I'm being a guest on another podcast. Ooh. I am being a um a guest on another Nerdy Up North production. Um, it's called Pop Grumps, I think it is. Sorry, um, Chris and Lee, if I've got the name wrong. I've literally just been asked an hour ago if I'm going to appear on the episode around Buffy Summers. Ooh. And to we... be fair, that's another one that's quite hard Yes. So we, we are keeping the theme alive. But yes, so all the links for all those things will be down below. But our next episode... I'm actually not sure what our next episode is. I've forgotten. Well, what, the next one that we're recording? Uh, no, our next one. Uh, let me have a look at the schedule because we've, I've shifted things around because we had the quiz last week. We've got us this week. Uh, let's have a look. Where am I? Ah, the week after is my special edition with the guys over at um, Jupiter Station. We're okay. going to be talking around PTSD in Star Trek. You mentioned this on yes. the Discord the other day. Yes, so I have got a... That should be a live episode as well, so that should be good. So if anyone has any suggestions on PTSD and Star Trek, pop them in the comments. They, I will grab them before we record. Everything with Picard and the Borg post best of both yes. worlds. Yes, so pop it, pop it in the comments so that we can see it. But I've got nothing more from me. Have you got anything else to add, Ben? Uh, no, nothing I can no. think of. No? Okay, so until next time, stay lovely and logical. Stay safe. See you on the flip side. Bye now. Bye. In the vastness of the stars we roam, obsidian.